This episode is brought to you by Communications Training for Coffee Teams, a new Mapper Forward workshop tailored to get your team communicating more confidently to improve general mental health as well as business profitability. Click the link in the show notes for further details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, we are talking about the cafe model um, and whether it's working or not. I'm joined for this episode is episode four of a five-part series with the fabulous George Howell. George, is the current cafe model working? Ours is, no doubt about it. Uh, Why do you think yours is working? Uh, one, I am gifted with a great staff. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do feel that because we have aimed very high, mm-hmm. um, and we don't have we don't have the comp- kind of competition for quality you might have at least yet in LA and other places. New we just York don't. And places like that. Yeah. So I have to say I have that advantage, right? Mm-hmm. We're dealing with um, a lot of chains, right? And a mm-hmm. few very small roasters who are maybe one cafe, two cafe, that's it, mm-hmm. more localized. And so we really, but we have aimed very high uh, and it, it would be very high in any city in the States. Okay. Period. We really are aiming for the very best. Uh, And we're producing single pour, but also quick coffee, Mm -hmm. you know, made from an urn that really can be just very delicious and keeps changing Mm -hmm. as well. Um, And we've been doing it very consistently with good management. Um, We promote the art, the indigenous art I talked about earlier that's on those walls, right? Still. Uh, Sorry? Still on the, oh, you're yeah. still, oh, oh beautiful. Oh, hundred percent. Two, four foot by four foot pieces that just wow. dominate, right? That look out into the street, uh, that are protected with a glass so that mm-hmm. they don't lose their color. And, uh, and a contemporary uh, artist, Lynette Shaw, uh, mm-hmm. as well, uh, who did a, a whole piece that covers the entire wall going up 12, 15 feet. Wow. Uh, that takes another wall and the two the indigenous art which is mythological and such and this very modern abstract they work perfectly together right so it's an environment that is again very aesthetic and that is pleasing right Mm -hmm. that that invites your using your senses Mm -hmm. right and the whole space we aim to have that way right Mm -hmm. Uh, to me every cafe should be different it should conform it should work with the space that's given and problems within that space are also opportunities to make that space interesting Mm -hmm. that that's sort of the approach right that's Um, that magic and romance that we were talking about when it comes to coffee right yeah it's not just and it's not i i don't go for the couches and the super relax have a cigar kind of thing right right big couch um, you know, they're wooden chairs and so on. They're not uncomfortable, but they're not super comfort either. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of, this is a social play. Right. You know, make a mm-hmm. speech and to be part of that. Um, and then you, what, what happens is we have been attracting some of the best people in terms of so really talent. want to learn about the coffee, the craft, and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. And so far, despite all the talk about how it's hard to get people labor and so shortages, on, I'm pretty proud yeah, of wow. the people of the people working there and developing. So, um, you know, I I can't complain. And we do see our weekends doing better than they ever were. Wow. This is a city cafe, right? But we yep. did choose just the right location for it. Uh, so you have a pedestrian road there that, that comes right to the cafe as well. So tourism in Boston comes up in the summer. That's big. But already in the winter, we've been doing great. We've been beating 2019. Amazing. So that's so. an example of a cafe that's managed to thrive despite a lot of economic challenges, right. a lot of cultural challenges that are going on in America, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So when we look at 
the reality of how it is for most other cafes. What you've got working for you is that you aren't in a saturated market and yes. and you have some clearly and, defined values about the way that you run your business. And uh, yeah, and we also serve many different coffees so that, you know, what's people are there. How many? Well, because we freeze the green coffee. Mm. It allows me to sell 20, 25 different coffees, not five right. or six. So if you're working there or coming in, this week you might get that coffee. The next week you get a completely different coffee. And the next week a different one after that. You have a whole shelf of different availabilities, pour overs and so on. So it's really kaleidoscopic from that point of view. It's closer. It's not a wine store, but it's closer to one like right. that. And do your and customers also, appreciate that? Do they do that? You do your customers recognize the value in in that offering? Key ones do. Okay. And often those people who really appreciate it are also influencers in their own right because they have that enthusiasm, right? Uh, right. That they want to spread, right? You create not a satisfied customer. You create a customer that goes, wow, I haven't had this anywhere else. I got to tell Betty. <laughs> right. And that happens right. in Boston. That's something that you witness. That okay, great. That I, we've seen word of mouth work very well. Okay. Right. So, and, so, you know, even Howard Schultz was aware of that with Starbucks. They never mm -hmm. advertised at all, right? It was their cafes and their placement and that whole sense. And at that time, that was very new as a as an environment, right? That whole idea of a living room, right? So if you were to, to look at that, that's working. And yep. I, I'm so pleased to hear that that's working so well. As we look at um, the stuff that we talked about in the last episode when it comes to economics, what, what are you seeing in the cafes that are not working? I haven't seen enough of it because COVID has kept, kept us all kind of right. grounded still. So then historically in the cafe uh, model, what, does, what do you think is it that isn't working? Because people keep reinventing the wheel and then keep closing their cafes. Where are they messing up? Yeah, I haven't seen enough to know that they're all going downhill. I suspect a lot of them are doing all right and very well. And I don't know enough yet to be able to, okay. to really be able to tell you. And in Boston, again, there's too few of us to, to really be able to tell. I do think that the better cafes here, mm -hmm. roasters, are doing all right. right. So, so let me put it to you a different way. The, yeah. the average net profit margin for a cafe is well under 5%. Yeah, there is the problem of margins. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that's absolutely true, and we've been very careful. Yeah, we have not been able to raise our prices fully to keep the same margins at this right. point, right? But the volume is higher, and so. and so if that from that perspective, yeah, the cafe model has been broken for some time, and as the cost of living crisis goes up, and all our cogs go up, and it's more expensive to find staff, where does how does that part of the model get fixed? You know, Nolan, um, Nolan Hertie was on the podcast recently and he said, and I asked him a, a similar kind yeah. of question from Proud Mary's and I said to him, you know, mm. what about when it comes to profitability? And he said, nobody gets into this game for profitability. That's a very good point. But he's, I think a lot of people get into it for profitability. Right. And the nobody I, stays for profitability. Proud Mary, and I really, really like what they're doing, a lot yeah. of the stuff they're doing. <laughs> right. But they're also at the same echelon of, as what you're doing. They offer yeah. exceptional coffees. Yeah. They, the, I mean, I've never had a terrible coffee. I've never even had a slightly bad coffee at Proud Mary's. Right. The, the attention to detail at every touch point is near on perfection, which is expensive. It's expensive to, to train people. It's expensive right. to keep people. It's expensive to oh, yeah. buy good coffees. It's expensive to market the way that you do, to, to keep a certain standard, which means that you're eating away at any kind of profit that, that you would have had anyway to start with. Yeah. Now, well, when we look, go ahead. This cafe is doing still profitable, right? Mm -hmm. And the prices are slowly catching up. 
right? And we faced this before when I had Coffee Connection and whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. we nearly died in 1976, 1977, because that was the killer frost of Brazil. Right. 50% of the trees in Brazil were dead, right? We saw the price of commodity price go from under 75 cents a pound to almost $4 a pound wow. years later, the highest it ever was. And that's in the dollars back then. That's like $20 today. Right. right. Uh, we went from, I have photographs of our selling Hawaiian Kona for $2.99 a pound. Right. Two ninety nine, right? Well, folks, and, just for comparison, you're looking at about sixty or seventy dollars a yeah, pound right, right now. And and you know, two, three years later, our lowest price coffee was hitting towards ten dollars. Wow. And we watched we watched our sales drop like a rock when we hit about five or six dollars a pound from that original two ninety nine. Because we were raising the price almost every month, right? Wow. Uh, you know, but the bar kept us going. Okay. Right. The drinks, right. But the retail is what died. Right. Right. But coffee prices finally stabilized at a much higher price. Mm -hmm. uh, Which commodity set the new price bar. started coming down, but we right. were able to stabilize at around eight to ten dollars a pound average in our mm -hmm. retail price of coffee, and people started coming back. And then they were coming back in droves. And many of them were basically saying, I went to the cheaper stuff and I couldn't live with it after having drank right. had your coffee. And I just had to come back, right? So, so the takeaway is make it exceptional, right? Yeah, we can't, we're at the beginning of something and it's very hard to really know right. where that's going to go. People will make choices to say, basically, I can't do this anymore. I can't do that. But this I really love. Right. Okay. Right. And Fantastic. that hasn't settled yet. Well, we're only just getting started. We really don't know where this is going. So I, I suspect that there is some interesting times for the coffee industry over the next five years, and we'll see how it plays out. All right. We've got one episode to go, folks, um, and yeah. we will see you in the next episode. Thank you, George. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.